TVs. I yeah, know. We're, now we're too high tech. So are we good? No? Yep, we're good now. Okay. Okay. Welcome to the uh, select board meeting. Today is Monday, July 29th. It is 7 o'clock p.m. And we have one uh, agenda item scheduled for today. But prior to that, I do have an announcement to make, even though it's not on here. This is a happy announcement, something we've been working on for quite some time. I thought we'd be ready for tonight, but we're not. But we are going to be ready for August 12th, the August 12th select board meeting, which will be the first select board meeting in the town of Millis that will be live streamed which is, I know, miracle of miracles. But for everybody that doesn't live in town and who is not a cable subscriber, you will be able to watch the select board meetings live. This is the first step. After that come the finance committee meetings, and then we can talk about who else wants to jump on this bandwagon. So anywho. That makes me very happy, as it makes the entire board happy, because we've been working on this for quite some time. And it's one of our goals. One of our goals. Oh, my God. On, and we're going to be able to check, check that, that right off. off. <laughs> so now we're going to get to the agenda item uh, that is before us, which is, should I read the, uh, uh, the ask from that I, the email from yeah. Robin. Do, why don't or we, do we just jump why right don't in? We just away? jump right in and start with the um, <clears throat> what we're doing and why we're doing it. Okay, what so what we're out. doing is we've been asked by the uh, school committee to place another warrant article on the next town meeting, which would be sometime in November, to consider. Um, a, uh, another proposition two and a half operational override. And so we've invited the chair of the school committee, Robin Briggs, who's live from New Hampshire. Thank you for coming. Um, and Mr. Mullaney's here from the school superintendent. And we've also invited uh, the chiefs, Chief Barrett Fire, Chief Sapphire Police, Chief McKay, DPW, uh, because they were part of the last operational override. And so we uh, invited everybody so we can uh, get some more information and decide whether or not uh, we are going to honor this request. What do you got? Just one slight point. Go. I don't know, we, we asked them if they wanted to be included in another override. We're doing this because okay. we decided a while back that this problem needs to be addressed. Yep. And we're asking each of the department chairs and the school department whether they want to be included in this as we address it. Yes. So it's not being instigated by the school committee. We asked them if they wanted to be included in it if we were considering it. Well, the school committee wants to be included in it. Right. We're asking the other departments. Right. Well, right. We, we, asked, we asked the school committee if they wanted to, and tonight we'll ask the departments we supervise yes. if they want to be included. Yes. In it. Thank you okay. for that clarification. And Madam Chair, if I can make one clarification yes. as well. Um, I know some questions have come up as to why we're addressing this yep. so early yep. um, before November. Um, that really has to do with the state law yep. in, in regards to the state bien biennial election ballot. Um, override questions may be placed on the state biennial election ballot. However, those questions must be submitted to the Secretary of State for certification by the first Wednesday in August preceding the election. That's under Mass General Law Chapter 59, Section 21C, Subsection I. So if the board were to put uh, override question or questions on the ballot, they would have to be submitted to the Secretary of State's office by August 7th. Yes. Their next regular meeting is August 12th. Yes, I um, actually So picked, I just I, wanted to just touch upon the timing. Yes, um, I of actually, the yes, I picked this, the right here, summer dates and deadlines. I just picked up from Kathy down in the town clerk's office. And yes, the deadline to notify the Secretary of the Commonwealth for a prop two and a half question for state election ballot is August 7th. So since our next meeting is not until August 12th, we're holding one tonight to uh, 
make sure that if indeed we want to go forward, we will make the deadline. Is that what Thank I got? You. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, how do we want to proceed? You want to start with the school? Do you want to start with your the, call? My call. <laughs> how did we do the original one? Did we bring in, well, Robin's coming us live, so do you want to start with the school? Is that good? Because we we'll probably have campus to take care of out there. So, uh, Robin, we got the request, and we, we, I don't know if you want to talk or if you want to uh, let us ask a couple of questions. You want to make any kind of a, um, um, an introduction on, on why you uh, are asking for it for this November? Something's wrong. No. Yeah. No. No. There's a lot of static. That's going to be a Mills community media thing. What? I'm going to run down and grab that. Why don't, we, why don't we move to police and fire while we right. try to Right. Robin, that. we're going to try to fix. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. I don't have my video key? Yes. Yes. That's better. Um, we are requesting the override in the amount of $1,070,767, what we requested in the spring. Um, we cut about 16 positions, and we are trying to make our school whole again so that the children have the best education possible in our town. That's our first request from you guys. Um, our second request, as I stated in our email to you um, the other last week, is that it comes to our attention that there has been an additional $80,000 of state aid um, specifically for education. And we would like to also have this um, be allocated to the schools. We've been working closely with our state representatives and our state senators to try to get more funding for our district, and they have come through with to the tune of $80,000 um, in order for us to achieve this funding or get this funding allocated to the school. We need to request that you put this on the warrant for the town meeting article. If we are to get this $80,000 designated to the school then our request for a override would be less $80,000 to the tune of $990,767. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks Robin. Um, there's a little mechanical side to that. First off, we've all been working really hard to get the state legislatures to come through with anything, and 80000 is something. It's not a lot, but it's a step that they've taken. So I think it's important even though we don't typically allocate that way, to include that in the money that we allocate towards the schools. That would be a little different. Years ago, and I think Pete might have been on the committee when Senator Cheryl Jakes got us money, and we tried not to allocate it to the school. She put it all in Chapter 70. She made it fairly clear that there would not be a lot of money forthcoming if we didn't honor the desire of the state legislature to fund education. So I just want to make sure we use it where it was appointed, where it was appropriated for by the state. Uh, it's eighty thousand dollars. It's certainly needed, and it would reduce the override. Now, the mechanical side of that, from what I understand, is we have to get this submitted to the state by August seventh, I guess. And so we're going to have to ask for the full amount on the ballot. But in town meetings, should the eighty thousand be allocated to the school, we can amend on town meeting floor for the portion that is actually appropriated out of that 104. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. That's my understanding as well. Yeah. All right. You got that? I got that. Okay. I just, uh, uh, I mean, I have a lot of questions, but uh, uh, a, a couple of questions come to mind immediately, and that has to do with you've laid off or let go 15 or 16. I have the the spreadsheet here, so whatever it is. 15.8. 15.8. And this, if, if we go forward tonight with your request, there'll be a, uh, another election and another vote in November. Um, what, does that, what does that do for you for, um, I guess the, wh one of my personal feelings is, I am for the override. I was for it before. I'm for it again. 
I, I don't like the timing of November. I personally do not like the timing of November. I think it's too soon. Um, I don't know if it's enough time for everybody to get their act together to really campaign for this. But more importantly, I don't know if you've let all of these 15.8 go, I'm not sure what a win would do for you for this coming school year. So can you explain that to me? Somebody, either Robin right. or maybe, Robin? Yes, are you ready? I'm yeah. ready. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Uh, Robin, Robin. Robin. Stop talking. If you can hear me, stop talking. Yeah. Robin. She can't. Robin. Robin, 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 Robin. <laughs> Robin, 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 Robin. She can't hear anything. We're going to go to you in just a second. <laughs> She's breathing. I can <laughs> Robin? Yeah, turn the volume. Robin? Oh, no, she can. She stopped. Oh, she stopped? She stopped. Robin, we couldn't, there, there was bad break up there on the speaker, so we're not. That's what we're hearing, sir. Yeah. It might be on the, um, it might be on her end because of bandwidth at a summer camp, having been through this before. Yeah. Robin, we couldn't, are you, we couldn't hear anything. You broke up really bad. We can't, we can't hear you at all. It's all static on this yeah. end. We have the IT guy here trying to look at it. Should we throw it over to Bob? Yeah, it's still not good. No, we're still not there, Robin. No. No. Nope. Unfortunately. Robin, no. <laughs> no. We're going to throw it. Can we throw it to Bob? He's in the room, and he might be able to explain it. Okay. <laughs> so if you mute yourself so we don't get any weird static again, that might help us. Thank you. Okay. We have a same problem at our summer Mr. camp. Mulaney. The bandwidth yes. is about that big. <laughs> <clears throat> Go. Um, so I think your question is about getting the positions back. Um, it is something that, you know, personally as superintendent, I believe the sooner we do it, the better. Okay. Um, I've worked in a district where we had a similar situation where an override failed in the spring, and there was a, a successful override in the fall. And we um, hired people for second semester, so in January. Um, it creates a lot of work uh, on, in terms of preparation and classrooms and changing schedules and things like that. Uh, but in my mind, it's definitely worth it to keep those 15.8 positions um, for half a year rather than go a whole year uh, with a, a depleted staff in all three of our school buildings. Mm -hmm. And some of the positions it looks like, Madam Chairman. I just say, yeah, I, I yeah. just got a text that said that Robin can be heard on Zoom fine, but just <laughs> not in this room. I would like to take back possible? everything I said about your summer camp <laughs> bandwidth. Is it is possible? possible, but that's <laughs> us. It's probably Maybe. the Kandal. Yeah, so we're working on that, Robin. Okay. <laughs> um, um, I okay. Where I was so, oh, yeah. go ahead. Well, you so if it passed, um, when you'd start bringing people back in January. Right, we'd start the hiring process as soon okay, as. Okay, and then, if, but how, how? How? You think you're going to integrate people in January? And I mean, well, some of these people on this list that you requested, who we've uh, you know terminated or have moved on, yeah, they're they're gone. Unfortunately, we won't get them back. Yes. But we will uh, hire for those new positions. 
Um, and there, there may be some people on this list who are still available. Um, and uh, for the other positions, we'll you know, advertise them as we do with all our positions. And um, it would be a, a, a bit of a hiring frenzy. But uh, again, I would say better to have uh, the positions filled in January than to go from January to June without these positions, um, you know, and, and just. I'm not sure of the, I mean, I don't know anything about it, but my gut would say that anybody that's hanging around in January, I don't know, are they the, uh, can I say this on TV? Are they the, <laughs> you can say I say it. everything on TV, people know it. that. Uh, are they the best candidates? Well, it would be, it, it, they would be signing on till the end of the year. So it would be, you know, essentially a six-month audition. Okay. okay. It's not a con. Yeah. And I will say there's well, a lot of teachers that are looking now. A whole lot that are looking. Because of a lot of overrides. A lot of overrides. Right. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, that's, that's true. So we're going to have and a lot of might be bartenders that okay. are looking to get back yeah. into teaching. And the pool of candidates yeah. in the last few years have been very shallow, you know, after the pandemic. Right. And, and, right. But now we're seeing it start to rebound where... You know, we, we had a um, long-term sub position in the middle school for history teacher uh, just this past couple of weeks, and we've already had 15 applicants for it. Uh, last year, we had a teaching position, not a long-term sub, a te teaching position, and we had no applicants for it. So um, the pool is picking up. And a lot of those positions, just looking it over, and that's why I was just looking at, like the, the paraprofessional in those positions yep. are highly likely to be able to find somebody pretty quickly, I would think, as opposed okay. to maybe a TV production. In elementary right. school, they won't be having digital literacy this year. Yeah. So even getting a half year of that, I think, is valuable. Uh, yeah. Okay. I have other things, but you want go to... Go ahead. No, we please, can... go ahead. I want to talk about why... And this is kind of, I wanted Robin more. Are they working on anything or did they give up? I think it's just the Candow. There's something. It's no. It's not them. No. Yeah. I know, but it's. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Oh, we yes. can. So do short sentences, pause, and yeah, we'll let take, you know. Yeah, t because we can hear you for a minute and then, and then like that, we oh, get this big static. So just say a couple of words right now, Robin, please. Nope. Nope. All right. Are they working on it or did they just leave? No, he just left. Well, I'm going to try. Can I try something? Uh, Someone else talk. Yeah. P Mr. Barubi, could you just say hello to us? I want to see if it's just Robin or if it's everybody. It's yeah, it's everybody. No, it's everybody. Well, no, but, but he cracked yeah. up right at the beginning, so I think it's everybody. I think there's something wrong with the way it's I wired. It's, yeah. We'll use the, the owl next time. Test, test, oh. test. I can hear him now. I can yeah. hear you now. Say something. Say a full sentence, Pete. This is Pete Bruby doing a sound check. Okay. Okay. Well, he's perfect. He's perfect. All right, Robin, let's... Try it again, Robin. One sentence. Uh, we need all of our teachers back. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that worked. That was a good sentence, Robin. <laughs> and it seemed to have worked, so... But again, Robin, when you take a little pause in between and just look at us. If we go like this, the static in here is deafening. Yeah. So my next question is this. Uh, you ran a campaign last time, and I know you lost by eight votes, uh, but whatever. W and this is going to be a national election, so the numbers that are people throwing out are that 6,000 people are going to vote instead of the 2,000 that voted last time. If 6,000 people vote, if you run all these numbers, then um, you're, you should be looking for 3,500 yes votes. Um, and that means that all of the may yes vote, if, if you get all the ones that came out before, which, which was 1,000, then you only need only 2,500 yes votes. And what I'm wondering is, what are you going to do differently to get those votes? What you, do you have a plan? I hope you have a plan. We are going to 
knock on doors and ask people to vote for the school override. We were going to give them information about the override, and we were going to request that they come to the polls. Are you going to be forming a campaign committee, or will somebody, do you know of anybody that's, maybe not you, but last, for the elementary school, I think that yeah, Aaron formed it. Yeah. yeah, I was one of them. Do you have people forming, uh, have you heard that people might be forming, parents especially, committees or anything like that? Okay, no. No, she can't hear us when that's going on. That, you, you broke up You broke there. up again. That's why we needed somebody from the school committee. Yeah. Now you're breaking up too bad, and there's nobody from AV that can run it through the owl. No, I can that. call Jim Donovan to see what. Okay. Call him. Yeah. I've got nothing to lose. Yeah. You probably don't have any. I wouldn't think that you would have information, Bob, but maybe you do. No, uh, nothing. Just anecdotal evidence of you know. Parent, um, parent comments, you know, after the failed override, yeah. certainly uh, that energized a lot of parents. And so my hope is that that energy will continue through uh, the fall and committees will be formed and there'll be organizations. But I can't speak to I anything that. that's I started. That. Yeah, and it's going to be... It's going to need to be more than school parents at, at 3,500 sure. votes. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I would say if they're planning on a campaign that includes, you know, knocking on doors, that there'll be a sign campaign. There'll be um, a lot of the other things that were done for the Clyde Brown topic last time. Um, that I mean, that's a, it is a lot of votes to get, but I don't think it's impossible. And I guess that's what it comes down to. I mean, and the question is, is it as important enough to do early when you need a much larger turnout, or is it something that should wait till it needs a smaller turnout? I, I subscribe to do it at the national election because the large turnout, at the very least, is going to let you know where the town stands. There's not going to be any ambiguity on this one. I agree with yeah. you on that, but yeah. I, I'm, 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 I'm turning a little bit to thinking that I agree with you. You're going to have a definitive. It's not going to be eight votes, I can yeah. assure you. Either it's way. going to be hundreds. Either way. Yeah. I, my fear is, is that it's going to be hundreds against. Because I don't know if people that have no knowledge, people that go to the national election, these 3,500 people that you need, I don't know if they're going to get through the presidential part, if they're going to get through the five Massachusetts questions, which are crazy, and then the, I don't know where the placement of the school will be, the, 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 the override will be on the ballot, and uh, these are people that probably don't typically vote. We got 2,000 people last time. This is 6,000. I don't know if the message, my fear is that the message will not get out, will not be heard, and it will be overwhelming, but not in a good way. And I say a good way because I'm for it. Yeah. Um, that's my fear. Um, so I know you think it could well, be. Nobody uh, knows. If we knew, knows. we'd be at, in, in, yeah. in uh, Vegas. I so. can tell you that when we had a smallish turnout or a medium-sized turnout, 21, 2,200 people, it didn't pass, no. so, but I, but not by enough to make it definitive. So I, I I don't know if any, and I don't know that it's our job to try to predict what's going to happen, mm -hmm. or if our job is to ask for what we believe needs to be done, Agreed. and then let the voters decide if it happens or not. I mean, I'm I'm on the same place Ellen is. I am very much in favor of the vote, uh, of the project, of of this passing, of getting the teachers back, the police, the fire, the DPW, all of it. Um, I'm concerned about having to find half of 5,000 or 6,000 votes, but the question then becomes, is that what the concern should be, or is it so important that this needs to be voted now so that we can bring back the kindergarten aides, bring back the low-hanging fruit, and then be, have surety as we start going into next year to start filling those positions right away. But 
that's the way I feel about it. I so I, I am leaning towards the November time frame because it is the time that we need it for this, for this portion of it. We'll get to each of the other portions as we get yes. to each of the other portions. But for the school, the damage is done. 15.8, let's call it 16 so I can talk about it. 16 positions are gone. We have a chance of bringing seven, eight, nine, ten, some of them back. I would take that opportunity every day of the week. Yeah. And just to interject, apparently uh, what Robin was saying that we couldn't hear in this room was that she was waiting to hear if this is going to be on the ballot before forming a committee. So forming yeah. a committee would be in the plan um, right. as part of the campaign. Well, as much as I'm against the timing of it, which I am, I'm, I don't believe it's my position to second guess the school committee undermine the school committee. You're elected, you, you know your jobs certainly better than I do. Uh, so I'm not gonna substitute my personal feeling and if this is what the school committee unanimously voted, which I believe it is, um, then I, am, I support it. Uh, but again, I have reservations. I think you have a enormous job I say enormous, and I said this to you in the meeting the other night, and I'm gonna say it again. You have to do such a job that if it does lose, you can all look at each other and say, you know what, we did everything we could, we left it all out there, and uh, there's, there's, you have to feel good about what you did, and, and I think that's important, so. That's my message. Can I just ask a point of clarification? Yes. When you say you have reservations, your reservations are the time. That's it. Okay. That's it, the timing. Yeah. I think that... Because uh, I don't want the sound bite getting out that you have no, reservations no. about the override. No, I support <laughs> the If anybody can hear us at all. I support the override. I supported it before. I have not changed. I have not changed on that. Um, it's just the timing. Uh, and I, I just hope that... Um, that whatever you, your plan is, and I offered my help the other night, and I continue to offer it, um, that you, you just do a campaign like it's the campaign of your life, that's all. Do we have, uh, are, you, are you good with the school piece? I'm good with the yeah. school piece. I just, I get just one quick, and at this point, you would be asking just for the 15.8, not anything more than what you asked right, for Right, there'd be nothing additional. And none of those positions are something, and I'm just asking, that, that would be cut that to lower the price. Or you believe yeah, that all uh, of those are right, critical uh, yeah, positions. It would, it would be all the positions, yeah. yes. I looked them over, and it seems that way. But yeah, I just but wanted I was, to make sure, I just need to check. Yeah, I yeah. wanted to ask, too, if, if, you know, in this, in your, this whole process that you've been through, is it possible, I know the answer, but I'm gonna ask anyway, yeah. just, you just ask, yeah. that you say, hmm, maybe we can do without. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and frankly, you know, for the 2003-2004 school year, the 2023-2024 school year, we laid off 6.4 positions right. um, and, and expenses, and you know, that's why this time, the, to cut that amount, you could only go to salaries. You're not, yeah. you're not gonna raise that amount cutting paper okay, clips. So let's just say that. So they, they let go. Six, that, right. that, that, So this isn't 15.8 plus six point. It, there's six point. Four, yeah, and that's not included. We wouldn't be hiring those people back. Right, those people right, right. are that's gone. That's significant, yeah, and that's, that's significant, and that's what it was last time. I guess the, that's Mr. Barubi, you're breaking up. I think this is systemic now, okay. it's spread. Okay. Um, yeah. No, actually, we can hear you. Go while, while it likes you. Go ahead, Pete. Pete, okay. we can hear you. Go ahead. Say something. Oh, is he doing something? No, that's Jim Donovan. Okay, just to follow up. Um, On that. I had something I was going to follow up with. Uh, I'd have to be heard. Okay. All right. Um, no, I guess that's good. So, I was just oh, I take the back. I'm staring right at it. I don't know why I can't read it. And just so everybody knows, the school committee has provided a list of 
I don't know, more than 15.8 names, but they've provided a list of names and positions totaling $1,118,000 and 5.8 of people that have been let go. Some of them are retirements that were not backfilled. So if a teacher chose to leave the system because they didn't want to deal with it next year, their position wasn't filled, and that counted towards the reduction because it's not a position that was filled. So there's been a lot of talk about it was all threats and everything else, but there is a list listing uh, um, a lot of names of a lot of people that were let go, totaling 15.8 positions and $1.1 uh, $1 million. So. But again, I want to say this again. Correct me if I'm wrong. <clears throat> a year ago, right. they let go... How many? 6.4 6.4. You never brought them back. Correct. So they're people gone. should know that. They, right. I did right. not and, I didn't and realize that. Good young teachers who yeah. are making their career elsewhere now, unfortunately. Right. Yeah. So should it be interesting for me to ask that you're not going for twenty three? <laughs> did you know what I'm saying? I understand that. Uh, you know, we made those cuts. Um, and the hope was that that this year, um, going keep, into with yep. with the um, potential override, that we would protect the positions um, that you had that that we already had. Okay, you know, those, I appreciate those others that. Yeah. gone, gone for good. Okay. Okay. Do you want to go through all the departments and or be heard or take comments? At Are each you, department? Mr. Fitzgerald? Am I correct? Is that your name? Yes, um, you speaking just toward the, the, the yeah I know but for the just the school piece or you want to wait till we're done at no, the no I wanted to speak for the timing on the school piece now uh, fine okay. Bob we Thank may you. want you mm -hmm. don't go anywhere Thank you your name and address Jack Fitzgerald Plain Street and I come to speak out against putting this uh, on a ballot or trying to get it on the town meeting so it'll be on the ballot in November it's too soon. I think your instincts that you expressed at the beginning of this meeting, Madam Chairperson, are accurate. It is too soon to have another vote. The voters of this town have already spoken. Although Mr. Schultz is correct that we would know in November how the town feels on that date, of course, the principle would then be established that we're going to be voting on this at successive town meetings over and over again. I already have petitions to uh, rescind any tax override that would be invoked and to give the voters 5% uh, back uh, interest on that. So it's too soon. The voters have spoken. I'm, I'm sorry positions have been cut, but the school is going to have to respect the will of the voters. And any time you start going up against the will of the voters, it's a real problem. And that's exactly what is the perception going to be if you proceed down this path. So I would suggest that there was a mistake on this handout. Um, it, it has A, for a, a 1.4 million override, or B, splitting it. There should be an option for C, none of the above. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Kathy McInnes, 78 Island Road. Um, I believe recently there was uh, uh, money left over on the health insurance fund due to the layoffs of those employees from last year. Now, um, in this uh, override request, do uh, those, uh, that figure include what health insurance would cost the town as well? Okay, you're asking on, on these 15.6 or the 6.6? No, the six, uh, not those, the, the current, the ones that are already laid off and uh, perhaps the FY25 budget does not include insurance benefits that the town's <coughs> responsible for. So I'm wondering where that will come from or if it is included in the uh, $1 million that is being requested. Madam Chair, thank you. Thank you. Um, Madam Chair, we did not, at the time of the town meeting, we did not know whether or not the uh, override was going to pass. Uh, so we did not make any reductions to the health insurance account. So uh, the health insurance account will have higher than expected leftover funds at the end of the year. Um, but we know re that regardless, now. Regardless of whether or not an override passes in the fall because you'll That's be right. at least six months through. 
Um, we did use less uh, health insurance this past fiscal year in FY24. Mainly that was because of a change in the GIC in the health insurances that were offered because Tufts and Harvard Pilgrim merged and a lot of the folks had um, chosen the less expensive plan. Um, so we did have some leftover funds, but I've also been told by our benefits coordinator that a lot of those folks went back over to a more expensive plan this year. Um, so that will be a break even, but um, currently we do have sufficient funds in the health insurance to maintain um, the employees um, whether or not this should pass. So when the health insurance fund was budget was prepared, these employees were included in it. It was expected it. that these employees would be and included. And at the end of the year, that would just roll into free cash at correct. the end of FY25 right, right. if we That's don't correct. use but it. But is there, a, um, can you quantify it or no? Um, the I, savings. Uh, we could. I can't do it on the spot here. No, I, I understand. Yeah. But, but we could. It's not going to cost us anything extra, so no, we do I not don't. need to include if, it. If, so I'm just if the no point override being, passes, there will be some additional, yeah. probably 200,000 right. range we'll will be yeah. left over. Yes. yes, in that line. I don't yeah. know if that answers your yes, question. Yes, it does. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, is that per spreadsheet public information, Madam Chair? It was discussed it, at a public meeting. If it was meeting? discussed at a meeting, it will be. Sure. It will okay. be Thank public, you. public information. Yeah. And also, I'd like to remind you that um, you. The three of you also represent the people that didn't vote for this for financial reasons. And I hope everyone takes into consideration the cost imposed on these people. And um, I worry that uh, many people didn't vote against it, just like what you're saying, Madam Chair. Uh, and they're going to show up. So <laughs> I agree with you about an idea about having it at this time. Thank you for now. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, Jim. Good evening, Jim Duffy, 343 Exchange Street. Uh, a couple questions and comments. First question, Mr. Schultz, you said there's a problem that's not going to go away. What is the problem? I've said that about so many things. Um, I, it could be PFAS, but probably in this context, I'm talking, but that is going away. The problem that's probably not going away is the imbalance in funding. We do not get enough from the state. Um, the only way we're ever going to fund any new position, I won't even address school, but police, fire, DPW, any new position is going to have to be voted by override. The state's not giving us any more money. Um, aside from the 80000 we got this year, which would cover DPW, you know, if we used it in that direction, it would solve that problem, but we're not. Um, that's the uh, problem that's not going away. The only way to fund this is through tax increases, unless we were to eliminate a department. Um, pick something. I mean, this isn't going to be nickel and dime little cuts. It's like we don't have a department anymore. We get rid of something. So these are lots of money we're talking about. You know, $1.4 million is not something that can be funded by the state. It's not something that's going, we're going to get state money for. We're not going to get anything else. The only way that we're going to do it is through an override. So that's the problem that I think isn't going to go away, the systemic right. um, lack of state funds. Which I don't disagree with, but I'm not sure we have a problem now because we didn't pass an override and we made the cuts to meet the budget well, we're or defining the funding problems that we differently. have today. Yeah, we're right? providing, right. defining problems differently. Right. I'm, providing pro I'm defining a problem. In my role where I sit, my job, the way I see it, and the other two may see it differently, is to look at what the town needs based on what my department chairs, be it the school, the police department, the fire department, or the DPW says. This is what we need to provide safe policing, safe fire, quality school, or, or prune the trees by the street, you know, that is a constant issue right now. So we don't have enough money to meet that, and that is the problem that I see. So yeah, you're right. We could, we could completely eliminate the Council on Aging, the library, and something no, else. No, no, no. no, no. And, and then we wouldn't have a problem there either, but that would be a, hu that would be a huge problem for me. So we're eliminating 15 positions at school and we're not adding the safe, the public safety. So I see it as our job is to provide all of those things to the town and that's what I'm trying to come up with a solution to do. Yeah, but I'm not town, recommending the, the town I'm said not no, said. but we're doing it again, yeah. right? So, yeah. okay. We'll always have a state funding issue, which is a yep. slightly different, well, I'll just bring it up now. 
unfunded mandates. There's supposedly some sort of a petition to go to the auditors. It was on sort of Facebook, and I have no I idea. I checked into that when I saw it not. on Facebook as well, and I talked to the town administrator. Again, we've talked about it. Um, it has to be an unfunded mandate. You're not on Facebook, so you didn't see I'm it. I'm not on Facebook. It's a. It's great read sometimes. It's it's an unfunded mandate. It's the only way I get up every day. Jim. There is I'm allegedly there's allegedly a way to f ask the state to fund unfunded mandates. Education's not fallen into that. They're providing how many million for education in Chapter 70? For the whole state or for, for the us, five million, uh, four million, yeah, about five million dollars. So they're funding it. They're just not funding it at the level that it needs to be funded. And it's really designed for when the state passes a brand new law that requires us to do something. And then the Mass Municipal Association fights that on behalf of the entire state. If our costs go up disproportionately on like education, they're already funding it. That's not going to be a solution. And anybody who thinks that's a solution is um, wrong. wrong. And same thing with commercial base. We're not gonna build a commercial base that's gonna come up with $1.4 million either. I'm on the Economic Development Committee. I said it there. I'll say it here, you know? So. <clears throat> okay. About a year ago, we had a, what, a 700 and something thousand dollar shortfall that equated to seven positions. Mm -hmm. How does a million seven equate to 15? Do we know that? It's not a million it's, It was. A million oh seventy, right? A mi I, I think you're wrong on the numbers. Um, and Bob, do you have those numbers? Come up, seven, come up, come oh, up. we also used free cash. That's what it was. We used free well, cash. Well, we funded and it, but yeah. it was seven hundred still thousand dollars or seven fifty shortfall to the school Correct. that equated to them needing to reduce by seven yeah. FTEs. So mm -hmm. we have twice as many for whatever the math is, thirty percent more of a shortfall. That's for my now. question. And the reason for yeah, that bu -bu -bu. Was Mike, you got to share the mic. Oh, sorry. The reason for that was the, the total cuts was not all salary. The, the million point one uh, reduction for 24, 25 is all salary. The um, 735, 100,000 was some salary and other expense line cuts, expenditure cuts, um, and um, some attrition. Good answer. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I uh, watched the school committee meeting of the other last week, the other day. Uh, the comment of we need to ask for the whole one point, whatever it is, because it looks bad to say, well, we really didn't need all of those positions, so therefore we still need to ask for all of them. I have no doubt that all those positions are needed. My opinion would be ask for some of those positions back, I think, is far more likely to pass as opposed to the whole thing, especially if we want to bundle municipal. I, th I thought the same. I, I, I can lean that way as well, that I'm not sure. My fear is, this is my fear. I sound like you, Pete. You always used to say that to front of anybody. My concern is my concern is that this is not dissimilar enough to the last one. It's close on its heels, and it's not dissimilar enough. Uh, so I, I... I would take a half a loaf, or Craig mentioned, I lost the context of, yeah. he'd take six or seven people back any, any day of the week. I don't disagree with yeah. I don't disagree with that. No. So yeah. we didn't the schools didn't implode losing seven people a year ago and then there's oh. other ancillary funds. They may implode with fifteen. I don't think we know the impact of that. That's the other reason yep. is agreed. Taking well, we'll, time to say agreed. at the end of the school year, what was our impact? Yeah, we had more kids or in a class, but we'll, we'll is, know is there a way to measure it. We'll know something by November though, because we'll be pretty far into the year, but we can certainly well, look at that. Right. I'm just, right. what I'm doing is I'm looking over the list to see which position, I if thought, I was going to say eliminate. I thought the same thing. I thought, well, <clears throat> these are all my thoughts. Lucky you. Um, I thought if you bring people back that soon, are you really going to get an idea of, of the total impact? And I don't believe you are. And I think uh, if you, if we know in November, 
does the school start backfilling a little bit and it's even more cloudy? I don't know, but again, but again, I don't, the school committee is a, a, a group of professional, intelligent, they have their hand on the pulse, I think more than me, uh, I don't know, but in that piece, and uh, if they want, if this is, they were elected, they, they, they you know, I'm, I don't want to substitute my opinion for it. I just, I don't want to. Thank you. Yeah, all. and my take on that, Ellen, is this isn't a hypothetical. I mean, there's second graders, there's kindergartners who aren't going to be in, uh, have a paraprofessional. Right. There's math, kids right. struggling in math that aren't going to have the assistance. So we could take a year and learn, and to it's not going to affect me or you or to Aaron what at what detriment? All. Yeah, at what expense? Right. A, a, but there is expense associated with that <laughs> for the people in I it. Agree. Yeah. Um, yeah. I agree. Yeah. You know, as much as I can yeah. do, boop, 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 this, yeah. for every this, this or that. So yes, but that's why we're having this, yes. uh, this, this discussion. Bring it all out. Go ahead, Pete. Pete Germain, 21 Causeway Street. <clears throat> I have a few comments and observations I'd like to make. First of all, we spent a lot of time talking about the schools, appropriately up to a point, but let's not forget public safety is part, part of this issue we're and we have to there. deal with that. And I think one of the things we're not hearing is what it costs to the community when we do these things and pass the overrides. And let me be very clear, looking at DOR tables that we can go through, the override itself will average about $302 for the families in this town. That's right off their tables. For the average family? For the average family, 30287. Now, that says, yeah, for some people it's gonna be higher. If you've got a home that's valued at 950, it could be $503. What's, what, what value does this attach itself to? This is the average. Is what I know, but the, what is it, 500, uh, about 600? Four, what do they say here? Five it's something. about four something, 465 or something we're, like we're, that. We're I don't five. know no, what they yeah, I, I, I would be it's concerned. The DO, it's right off the DOR I table. I know, but we had better than that. We're in the fives. Yeah. Anyway. yeah, and when we ran this last year, the total override, well, last go round, the override was 400 even, just yeah. about 400 even. For the whole one. For the whole package. Uh, I've yeah. got 302 right here off the DOR table okay. running it. For the and whole thing or just this the This is just the 1.070. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, right, okay there we go. Sense. That's Thank all you. it is. That makes sense, yeah. Right, and then but let's not forget, we have PFAS coming up. We are gonna to have to build another plant. That's another $300 on average that's gonna cost the taxpayers. We have Tri-County coming up. Now, we don't know precisely what that's going to be, but there are <coughs> several ways of calculating it. It could be as low as 350,000. That'd be $100, $97. If it goes as high as 800,000, it could be $230 on average for the families. These are averages. I'm not saying they're accurate uh, and beyond that. But then we also have a potential for either a new school or a renovation. And let's not kid ourselves. Even though we don't know what's going to happen, we have an opportunity to use funding that's being made available by the state. And it'd be nice not to have to turn that down. The question comes up then of what's that going to cost us. The school could be ranging from, I'll use round numbers, 90 million, to 160 million, and one looks at it and says, well, why not just do renovation, and you can do partial renovations, but if you exceed 30% uh, of the value of the assessed, it gets into a lot of different details. It turns out you may, in fact, be better off building new. It doesn't matter whether it's new or not. Let's just say the amount that the town ends up paying because the state kicks in some significant portion at $90 million, that's going to be approximately $2,100 to the taxpayers. I'm not saying it's going to be $90 million. Maybe it's 70, maybe it's more. I don't know, but I do believe it's important for us to look at this and say, okay, what's the probability we're going to have to pay these things and that we're trading one thing for another? I happen to agree, teachers are important. We all know that. We've grown up in public school systems. Is the town going to be prepared recognizing we have to fund Tri-County. There isn't an option. We're going to have to fund the PFAS. We've known that forever when it, those things come up. So we have funding that we're going to have to deal with no matter what. And on top of that, we have 
not just the schools, but we have public safety and DPW, which also are in need of support. And there are going to be additional mandated expenses, whether they are, and I hate to use the word, SPED. I happen to agree. We need to fund those, whether the state required it or not. It's a moral obligation, ethically and otherwise. But part of our problem is those aren't getting funded to the level we anticipated. So putting all those together, we may end up, even if we pass just for the schools, call it $1 million, we're going to have to consider that we may have yet additional expenses just to balance our budget for the schools alone in the coming years. So we've got major issues. And then as a town, we have to look at it and say, can we afford it? And can everyone in town afford it? Are we jeopardizing some group of individuals in the town who aren't going to have the wherewithal to deal with the costs that are coming up? And that's something that I, I look at, and having been on the select board, I think it's important, and I know the select board does consider this, but we need to all consider it because we're a community. So let's look at the whole picture. We can't just be looking at, yes, it's going to cost us a certain amount for the schools. We know that. The schools are going to have a lot of other options coming up. We know that but we can't afford not to fund the public safety organizations, including DPW, in the future, just How because of this. How are the schools this. gonna have a, a lot of other options coming up? They're what gonna be saying? asking for the new school or a re oh, renovation, okay. on top of which they, we've seen increases in SPED every year. And that has hurt us. Don't get me wrong, we need to do it. Whether it were mandated or not, it's important to do it. But those are increased costs that we have to deal with, and we need to factor them in. We can't say, okay, this year we've got one million, and next year suddenly we have some more SPED costs or whatever that are underfunded mandates. I won't use unfunded, but let's use underfunded. The reality is we need to be looking at the game plan for the long term and say, where do we want to put our money for the long term? Because if we need to pass overrides, we need to be looking at all the various departments that are important to our town in that regard. And there's going to be a cost to us, the taxpayers, all of us, in that regard. And there's going to be a cost to those who are less capable, let's say, of paying some of those taxes. And we need to think about them, too. So my thoughts. Good thoughts. Greg, you've been, you've been expressing these same thoughts for ever. Yeah, I mean, um, some of them are, I mean, they're all critical. Uh, you're right, and and even if you're lucky, uh, even even if we get, even if we just pick code compliance with the school, as Pete said, that's going to be 60, 70, 80 million that is just all millis, no contribution from the state, most likely. A new school could be a hundred, not a new, but a, a renovation, a full renovation could be 130 with the state paying 45, 40%, again, you're still talking 70, $80 million. So doing nothing to the school cost you 70, $80 million just because you gotta keep it open. So those are all considerations that have to be taken into account. And those are things that are going to be coming up in the future, I'm not denying that. PFAS is our best bet to get grants. We're working on that. We're working on other sources of the funds. So that one concerns me less because there is money available. I mean, we don't have it yet, but I'm hoping we get there. And the Tri-County, my fear is that's, that's, that's a catch-22, because as we drive students away from our high schools, right. they'll go to Tri-County, and that's going to push that number that Pete quoted significantly higher with us getting nothing. So that's where it gets to be a real mess, because we could easily drive Tri-County up to 50, 60 kids, which would... Us. Yes, I can do the math if I can do the math. But um, yeah, so um, <coughs> yeah, seven hundred and twenty thousand additional a year just for that, just for the building portion, for getting tuition. So that's um, those are all things that factor into this decision. So I don't. I thank you for bringing those up. I don't disagree with them. I, I just think that we take them one at a time as right. they come up. But I, announcing and notif and commenting that they all exist, but I'll. Cross one step at a time. 
Right. Yeah. We're, we, yes, Pete, very good. And we're, we're all aware. But I'm, I'm not sure it's the job of the select board to pick and choose which ones we're not going to bring to the town. So we're here to present. We're here to let you present. And then it's up to the voters. If you think it's important, vote it. If you don't, don't. Yeah. And we'll figure it out. After every vote, we will figure it out, what the yeah. next move is. Yeah, and, and I do agree somewhat with Kathy. We do pick and choose, but out of those four items that Pete listed, uh, five if you yeah. count public safety, I'd say I'd count them all as something I would bring to the voters. Right. You know, I, I would be hesitant to bring other things to the voters. <laughs> yeah, <don't see. laughs> Let's let's let's, yeah. let's let's Facebook calm yeah. down. Yeah. Uh, come on up. Name and address, please. Mary Lagon and Union Street. Um, so, this is my first time coming up here. So, um, I'm just trying to really educate myself and get more involved. Um, yeah. My, I just have one question and one comment. So, when I originally went to the meeting about the school, they said that eventually, because of the age and things that are going wrong, if we paid for it now or we pay for it later, we're going to pay for it. Um, with the age of everything going on, do you, just your opinion, like, is that accurate? Is that um, a fair, like, was that a fair and truthful comment with the condition of the high school? Yes, the high school's 50 years old. I was one of the first classes to go there, actually, when it was shiny and new. Um, but it's 50 years old. It's got good bones. I don't know if you know what that means, but yeah. we in the business know that it's got good bones. It's, the, uh, it's, a, it's a great building. It's not a teardown. Uh, but it has problems. Um, it, uh, the, the systems, the HVAC and some of the systems need to up, be updated drastically. I understand it needs a new roof. Um, and it's, it's tired, you know, like any 50-year-old home. And they've been patching it, um, and now it's time to stop the patching and put some money into it. So that is a fair assessment. Okay. And then I just had one comment. Um, I have a six-year-old at the elementary school, and I have a high schooler who's going to be a senior. And I know the comment was made of, like, we don't know what damage has been done. But I can tell you, um, for one of my seniors... I don't know what you mean by we don't know what damage... Like, I think the comment was, we don't know, like, the effects that it's going to have on the it. The override. The override, oh, sorry. The override. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> this is all new for me, so sorry. Yeah. Okay. So I just wanted to say, like, for my senior, um, both of them, um, it affects them because they weren't able, they're both not going to be able to take the classes that they were wanting to. So in my opinion, I think it would be very fair to let, I under, I felt like I saw both sides of both of your opinions and I, I'm very perspective. So I saw it definitely on both sides, but allowing, like you said, the voters just to be able to vote because like it's not gonna obviously affect my elementary student, but for my senior, you know, if she got something for six months and not the other six months, whereas the people before her got the opportunity, and if it passes, the people after her get the opportunity, but she no longer gets that opportunity. So I just wanted to voice that. Well, that's a fair assessment. <laughs> Thank you. You said it very well. Thank yeah. you. I, I, I'm sorry, I can't let this pass, Madam Chair. I. Um, I resent what Mr. Schultz said about the PFAS plant. 2,200 ratepayers <coughs> will be paying an additional $300 when the second plant goes online, I believe. 2,200 people will be paying over and above what these overrides will cost the town. You're using $300, 300, um, I'm, I'm losing my train of That's thought because right. of Craig. Time. The Tri-County money is being used from free cash. How long is that going to be the Tri-County assessment so far? It seems like this group does not have a what long group? range, what the group? select board, oh, okay. the, the elected officials, a long range plan of saying, this is gonna come due for these people, this is gonna come due, this is gonna come due. And to me, 
Staffing is the least problem of everything in town because the PFAS is required, Tri-County is going to be required, and like you said, Madam Chair, put this aside until you figure out where these chunks are changed. God love all of you for being able to afford these overrides because there's a lot of people, and you're not on the forum, I wish someone would print them out to you. You are, Craig. They you do, see yeah. all the people that cannot afford this. They'd love to, but they can't. And I wish you'd take that into consideration. Your uh, kids may not enjoy, they don't have their mm -hmm. paraprofessionals with them, and they're all upset. A lot of things people have to deal with. And to me, this is the least, mine, the least issue that's before the town right now, especially okay. talking about your 50-year-old school. Life. I get that. But Kathy, that's to you. We represent yeah. the entire town. There are plenty of parents. Yeah in this town that think that staffing is the most important thing. I get that, Madam Chair, but do th I want these people to know what the, people? The, the parents that are also water users, let them know what's coming down the road for them. This is the first time. Thank you, Mr. Germain, for notifying people of what a PFAS plant is going to cost. This is Wait, this is not whoa, the first whoa, time. May I, may I say something just a minute? We had a $3.5 million ARPA grant that could have been used for anything the in next this town. Plant. In, anything in this town. Anything at all we chose. We didn't have to put it towards the PFAS plant, but we put $3.5 million that could have gone towards anything, towards the PFAS plant to help the ratepayers. Right. So don't say we didn't do anything for the ratepayers. I'm talking three, about that's, the future one, Mr. The Schultz. The next one we have a federal grant for. We have we the the first plant was a two and a half million dollar grant. The second one um, is a three and a half million dollar um, uh, federal bond. Yeah. Um, that we were going to use in the first one, but we have to use in the second one for a number of reasons. But yeah. um, but those will both be um, applied Just towards the two PFAS plants. And there's a third source for investigating, but we'll talk more about that as we. Now, come correct to me fruition. if I'm wrong, Madam Chair, but a bond. Just interest free. You're still paying the principal. Oh no, no. I'm sorry. It was a it was a federal bond, so the federal government is paying that. Okay. Um, that yeah. it is it, to the town. It's a grant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's the only reason I said I wasn't concerned about the PFAS right. plant because there is a lot of money available for PFAS. People Maybe. care. Well, that's what five six million dollars right there, and there's another three million dollars source we're looking at. So at the, at, anyway, at, but moving at on. Every yeah. third or fourth meeting that we have here, we talk about all of these things that are coming down the pipeline. Every one of them. We talk yeah. about Tri-County. We talk about PFAS. This is not, I mean, I appreciate Pete, you s l listing it, but this is not new news. So let's all just take a breath and uh, yeah. continue with what's on the agenda tonight. So. Are we going to bring up the police fire in DPW? I do. Um, who wants to go first? Rick? Rick, you want to come up here? Sure. Okay, so now we're going to talk to the, um, the other three pieces of, of the last override, uh, in addition to the school, and see what, if anything, has changed. Um, I guess first, uh, the invitation to come tonight to say if we still want to be part of the override. Um, I would say we're not interested in being part of the override. Uh, we weren't interested in the last one. Uh, we presented ours as a normal operating budget, as we do every year when we ask for a request. We didn't see an override and say we needed a position. This is something we present every year. I'll present it again this year at our budget. Um, I think long term, we need to have a long discussion about uh, planning for increasing staffing because uh, contrary to some, uh, we're going to need more staffing. Uh, the uh, growth of the town, the emergency responses that were going on, this one position is now four. Um, so this year with our normal budget, I'll, I'll request that position and educate you on what we're dealing with currently and what we're looking at in the future. Okay, so help me understand because I don't really. You need more staffing. You're going to present as part of your budget we're probably going to say no, and I don't want to speak for you, but why not? The only, I've said repeatedly, the only way you can add a position is an override. So, so. I'm not <laughs> sure, Mr. Barrett, 
why you're uh, pulling this? Um, for, I think it's for many reasons, because A, there's no appetite for it. Um, B, um, <coughs> it's grown. The, we, we're going to need more positions. It's not just this one. Um, this position was put into play to kind of fill a void of that number two in the department, help us deal with the increase in call volume, um, help us uh, with the increased inspections and all of that. That's now turned into two positions uh, because of our call volume. I think our problem is that we don't do a long-term plan. We don't talk about staffing until all of a sudden we ask for it and then we try to figure it out. Um, I think we need to start looking at how are we going to do this over the next three to five years. Um, the last seven full-time positions that have been hired at the fire department, um, I got hired from grants mm -hmm. and through ambulance revenue. We have not gone to the taxpayers for any full-time positions since I've been chief. Um, again, I think it's time that we start talking about what is our plan for long term. I, I understand Mr. Schultz saying the only way to get positions is with overrides. I think we have to find a different way. Can you afford to wait? Again, that position is, we're, right now we're doing that with uh, recalls and overtime. Um, we have people coming back to staff that second ambulance. We have people coming back to staff the third engine. Um, our call volume is so great now. Um, many people don't understand that 10 years ago, you know, our call volume was three calls a day. Uh, we're averaging 12 to 17 calls a day uh, in the town of Millis. Uh, this isn't staffed by a call department. It's not staffed by volunteers, staffed by professionals. Um, and uh, all the towns around us are going through the same problem. So that's where we are. Yeah, I'll, I'll just make the comment. When I said it can only be funded by overrides, aside from what you did before with the ambulance call volume, if yep. you forecast that the ambulance call volume is going to go up again by 50%, then yeah, there is a revenue source. It has to be funded by a revenue source. Right. And you are the unique opportunity to make money. The police don't. School doesn't. DPW doesn't. So there is the possibility in your area, but um, honestly, um, unless you can show us how there's going to be a dramatic spike in ambulance volume, um, or, or revenue rather, it's, it's the only way we'll be able to add is through a, a, an override. But if you're not comfortable asking for one now, I'm certainly not going to force it on you. Yeah, and again, you say forecast. Yeah. So I've, I've been forecasting for five years. Yeah. Every statement I've ever made to you has come true over the last three. It'll continue to increase yep. the way we've said. The revenue will continue to go up. Um, so I think that's what my hope is to present to you with the budget. Again, and then we make a decision from okay. there. Well, I don't want to, I said a minute ago that I don't want to second guess or undermine everybody, but I would love to second guess and undermine you, but I'm not going to. So thank you. Yeah, great. <laughs> thank you. OK. <clears throat> Are you gonna do what he's just said, and and just we, we don't we don't I don't I don't we don't need it. I know. Um, <laughs> Chris, I didn't say we didn't need it. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Uh, thanks for having for having me. Um, so as as some of you folks know, and previous board members, well, back in 2016, when I got appointed, I came with a strategic plan. We knew about the growth coming to town back in 2016, 2017, whether it be the assisted living, Toll Brothers, that stuff was off in the distance. Mm -hmm. And with that, uh, you know, I met with the fire chief on many occasions to plan out like the increased call volume. That being said, <clears throat> every year that I came in, I'd ask for positions, right? That's the only thing I ever asked for, that and cars. Um, what it, else is there? Uh, yes. There's a lot. Um, Bolo wraps. But um, I asked for positions every year, and every year, uh, with the exception of we had a school, we hired a school resource officer and a couple positions. I forget the year. It was like 2017. I think Mr. McGinnis was um, on the board then. But with that being said, there's been no proactive measures to follow up with a strategic plan. Like, the municipal side grows, residents grow, calls for service, police, fire, DPW, town, the town hall. Like, every action has a reaction. 
and there's been nothing done, and it just keeps getting punted each year. So that's why we're here today. But that being said, I'm also not in favor of being part of the override. I think personally, it's, it's too soon. People voted, they voted no, which is fine, that's their right. Some people like it, some people don't, and we have to deal with whatever we have to deal with. Um, do we need the positions? Yeah, we need the positions, but I'm also willing to like, step back and look at it and think of how we can get those positions where they need to be. But that being said, the, we are gonna pay for it either way, similar to uh, what Chief Farrow was saying, whether we have police officers out injured, we have to fill those shifts with overtime, whether we have critical incidents, serious calls, and I'm calling in half the police department, you're gonna have to pay overtime. So it's, the town's gonna pay either way because on, if, I have an, if my overtime line is 165 and we have a critical incident going, I'm gonna call in the resources that I need and not be too concerned what the overtime line is because those calls need to be handled appropriately. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure I understand. If if this board goes forward with the school committee's request, are you saying that you don't want to be part of it because you think it's too soon? That's what I'm saying. Well, what are you going to do next year or the year before? I'm going to go come back when I come in with my budget presentation and I'm going to ask for the positions like I do every year. Who knows? Maybe you get more money from the state. I don't know. Maybe a grant comes out for police officers. But we're th three months since the original, um, since the May election, and we've, this is the second meeting on the override. I just, yeah. I'm all set. Well, we're good. Okay. I, I will respect that you don't want to be included, but I've heard about this since 2016 when I was on the Finance Committee. No select boards made an effort to get you the extra police beyond the two that came on when I was on the select board. And, um, and you made a compelling case that we need them. And that's why I pushed to put them on. I am not going, we're not going to have them next year. I mean, you can put them on your request, but unless you get a grant, I, I look at my crystal ball and I think Pete can look at his crystal ball and Kathy with her state history also. We're not gonna get a couple hundred thousand dollars in money from the state to fund police, you know. I, I'm fairly confident. Okay, I'm fairly confident that when the state budget's been going up by less than a half a percent a year, this is the first time it's gone up by close to two percent, maybe, and that was all earmarked for schools. That we're not going to see a windfall from the state. So if there's grants, great. But I don't think that if we talk about this coming from the state, I think we're kidding ourselves. And I was trying to do what's been asked for since 2016. I don't see a chance that's going to happen in the next few years without an override. And if we're holding for an override for just municipal, which I don't think you are, I, I certainly don't want to do an override for schools now and municipals a year from today. That would be problematic. So if we're not doing an, included in this override, I'm going to be hard pressed to go for an override in the near term, next couple of years. Threat. It's not a threat. It's a statement. I said that we were going to do an override and it was going to last us for four or five years. And so if I'm going for an override now, I'm not coming back in four or five years and until we Sometimes let it sit. I know, they do, Kathy, you're right. Yeah. Um, what, they do, that's part of their whole budget thing. They go for an override every yeah. year, which is crazy. But um, my concern, I might be, I think I might be opposite the school committee. I think that it's less likely that an override school only will pass. I, I, I have believed that since day one. Um, so I'm, I'm not thrilled that, um, that your needs for, uh, haven't changed, obviously. They're gonna get worse, by the way. And yet, um, I don't know what you're holding, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not holding out. What I'm saying is, is I wanna do my due diligence because it just, happened in May, and I don't know what's coming up. Yeah. There might be federal grants coming up. So if I can get a federal grant for police officers, why, why come 
ask the yeah. town for an override. Okay. I hate that. Okay. That's all. Okay, Rick, you got something? I, Sorry. Yeah, that's right. So I just want to add, I know you're not happy about it. I understand. My concern is that if we go for this override now, you know, I've just informed you there's going to be other positions. So now in a year or two, I come back and I say I need three, and now it's another override. What is the appetite going to be then? It's going to be non-existent. Uh, I think the goal is for us to get a better plan for the positions he's looking for, I'm looking for. I won't speak for the DPW, but I think long-term goals and making a plan for possibly a better uh, presentation of something. I don't know if it's an override or something, but it, I, I just feel that if we go for this this year, we get we lose again. I'm going to come back. I'm going to ask for more positions. Yeah. What's the appetite going to be then? But if we, okay, so, uh, okay. And if we get it this year, and in two years I come back and say we need more positions, what is the appetite going to be then? I just think we have to have a better long-term plan for these positions and what the growth is going to be and what we're going to do with it. But if this board decides tonight to move forward with the, the request, um, and that's what's before you, uh, not that we're going to deny, but we're, we're going to go forward, are you still have the same position? I do. How about you, Mr. Chris? I'm really not trying to be difficult here. Yeah. <laughs> but what I'm trying to do is just be logical about it because, like, for example, 2016, hey, here's the growth that we have projected. Yeah. And just going back, if the plan was, okay, maybe we add one position every two years over the next X number of years, 2024, we're where we need to be, right? Because what was on the override was two positions, but what I asked for in my budget presentation was three. Was three. That's right. So next year, you know, we're talking about building, and I'm not trying to deviate from yeah. why we're here, but <laughs> you're talking about a um, major apartment complex going in behind Stony Brook. So, yeah. <clears throat> like the fire chief, I'm going to come back here and say, need more, because our call volume goes up. I mean, we've proven that in detail down to the numbers of calls at locations, time on scene, that each officer's been there, and the significance of the calls have increased. And so that's what I'm worried about. And but if, if we would have, if we, would you be, I'm just throwing this out there. I'm not speaking for anybody but me. If we said, all right, well, then we're not going to do an override till May, would you jump on that one, or is that too soon also? I think what needs to be done is to have a group get together of the department heads and maybe a few members from FinCom, Board of Selectmen, and come in with a cooperative plan like that addresses DPW, fire, police, and school. On the, well, I'm just talking about the municipal side right now, but how the municipal side is going to attack the problem to include staffing at the town hall because it affects everybody on the municipal side, not just the police, not just the fire, DPW. I mean, the offices <coughs> over here attacks, too. But I thought we did, what am I missing? I, I mean, we've. I thought we did that uh, w with the hearings a bit ago. You need, you asked for three, we gave you two, we asked for one. One, municipal didn't have any asks, as far as I know. Yeah, I, <coughs> I think, I, I think what know. I'm asking for is a strategic plan scheduled out for, similar to my, uh, equipment replacement plan. It's scheduled out for tw like 20 years. Right. And you're not saying you're opposed to an override. You're just saying that there needs to be more time to determine exactly what the content of that override is going to need to be. A group coherent plan of like. Madam, I, Madam I, Chair, oh, yeah. I get it. I think, I think based I, I, on the, the Chief's comments, and I think they're very legitimate yes. comments, and, and I've had discussions with them as well. I think based on the vote that occurred several months ago, that um, the thinking be that we need to go back, kind of regroup on what the next three to five year needs of those departments are going to be, including the DPW, and, and develop an overall plan that, that will highly likely consist of some type of override um, at, at some point, and that 
you know, if the school wants to go forward right now and if the board is willing to support that, um, understand that this is a school override and that at some time in the future, in a year or two out, we'll have developed a plan to come back for the growth of those, you know, focus on primarily those three departments. We will look at the municipal as, you know, the general municipal as okay. well. But I, I think it's based on I think it's based on the feedback the chiefs have gotten as well as you know the result of the vote that occurred a few months ago. Yeah. Okay. And, and again, I don't think I it's know. anything against the no, schools' I request. No, no. Um, listen, I understand that the vote uh, took the a uh, lot of people's appetite away. I do. I under, I, I do. Um, and we need time to I guess regroup yeah. and. Yeah. Um, no, okay, thanks. I, I, I think that the reality is it's not going to be anything but an override at some point, but we can sit down and have those conversations because there's not new money coming in of high significance, like with the Glenn. No. You know? no. Should we hear from DPW? Yes, yes. of course. <laughs> we saved the best for last. Well, I don't know about that. Well, I don't either, <laughs> but I'm saying it anyway. So, again, thank you for having us here. Uh, it's always hard to go last, like the DPW always goes last <laughs> in, in, in all these discussions. I can't go against what the two chiefs said. I've been here longer than everybody in this room yes, as right. an administrator in, in, in the town. Um, I've been asking for that, that, that program, that, that let's go out and look five, ten years since the day I started working here. And the DPW was never part of that. It was never part of that cohesive discussion. Of, of where we're going to be. It doesn't sound like anybody was and, a part of and, it. Um, we're, you know, what department needs what in the future and so on and so on. We did a study. The study stands for itself. I come every year, I ask for more employees, and we don't get them. So um, whether we, you know, I, I can give you updates of where we are that, that could, you know, I mean, we see the, the developments being built. We have a development, Emerson Place. They're on their second phase. People are living in there. We need to respond to those places. We see uh, Gateway to Millis, 13 units, gone, rented out. He's on a second building. That's, they're probably all rented already. He's already gonna pull his third permit to build that. We have groundbreaking on the corner of Pleasant Street and at the Old Butter Bings. What's that, 34 more units, if not more. We have another groundbreaking that's gonna happen next week at the corner of Hammond Lane another 34 something units. We have a groundbreaking that's already immense up at, at Tractor Supply, yep. Mr. Roach's project. Another, what, 20 something units. So all of that, you know, we, we need to respond to it. It's not just the police and fire that respond right. to that, it's the DPW that responds also. Um, you're all well aware of the dissatisfaction of Millis residents, yep. what they have towards the uh, response that the DPW has. And that's not reflective of the work that we do and the staff that we have. It's what we can put out in the street. That's what you give us, and that's what we do. We don't, you know, the DPW can't fill positions with overtime. There's 13 of us, and that's it. You know, we, we have 13 people. I can't bring people in on overtime to cover shifts. Somebody's out. We don't, they just don't get covered. People have vacations. They use them during the summer because we need them during the winter to plow uh, roadways. Um, so to look at a, an override, I, I look forward and I hope in my whatever time I have left here, I would be, I'd love to build a, a, a program of where we're gonna be within the next five or 10 years. I wish we did that, you know, was it 19 years ago when I came here and we never got anywhere with that. So um, it's your decision. That's why we elect you, you know, yeah. what, what we, all, we all live here. And you know, uh, it's your decision on what you, how you want to give us what we request. Because again, come January, there's like the last past Januarys, I'll come to you, and I'll ask you know you for more staffing. I'll ask the finance committee for the same thing, like I've done every single year since I started working here. So, thanks. Well, I think we give him three. <laughs> <laughs> he should have asked for four. <laughs> Uh, Jim Duffy, 343 Exchange Street. Couple of comments and questions. So, um, personally, I would have voted for one additional police officer in an override if that were put out. If there was a municipal override separately, I would have still asked for only one police officer, but probably would have voted for it. 
well, con concern's the wrong word. We can't come up with $90,000 to fund a police officer. We have to do an override. We can't come up with $54,000 for a DPW laborer on a $44 million budget. We gotta come up with an override. That's concerning to hear no staff without overrides. We have tax growth. I don't know, do we know what the growth projection number is for this year? 750,000 to 800,000. And we can't fund a $90,000 police officer. Well, we also have inflation and we have contractual wage increases of two and a half percent for cost of living plus another 2% for steps, so call it 4%. Um, then we also have inflation. Our gas also goes up, our expenses go up. Um, no, there isn't. I mean, even, even with that $800,000 of extra revenue, we could be facing cuts next year. I mean, that's not enough to make up for the contractual overrides on just the municipal side. I'll just, I'll just talk municipal. School's just about the same place, but we're gonna have a tough time maybe, probably maintaining, but we'll, we'll, we'll make that work. And the way we do that is we cut back. We have areas where we can cut. We have areas that aren't must funds, and I'll lump the Council on Aging, library, all those as must funds. But then you start getting to things like roads and OPEB and things like that that you could start pulling money out of to fund budgets, but nobody wants to pull money out of roads. Um, we kind of have to fund OPEB from a other post-employment benefits, finally figured that one out. Um, that's a mandate that we have to do at some level. We do $50,000, $100,000 maybe. So all of those things are things that 10 years ago we weren't funding. You know, um, that's where we, were, we didn't fund roads, right Jim, 10 years ago? We didn't fund OPEB, we didn't fund stabilization, we didn't fund any of that because we're putting every dime we could squeeze out of the town into operating budgets just to stay even. So we can go back to those days. That's what we're trying to avoid. We're trying to get a way to fund these positions without having to make these cuts to where we were 10 years ago. Now, if that's what we have to do, it's gonna be the roads, the OPEB, the stabilization, the, uh, uh, sped circuit, the, sp the SPED account we started to fund that. Those are all lovely items that we've been able to put money into to help us in the future and grow. But um, it's gonna get back to um, a bare bones type situation for things that people care about to keep people things that they need functional. So no, I don't think there's fifty. I don't think there's ninety thousand dollars extra in the budget. I don't think there's fifty thousand dollars extra in the budget. <clears throat> Maybe the fifty. I'm not. Gonna, but that. But there's a certain level it is that we just can't fund. And I mean, you can shake your head. You can read the budget though, and you find me one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and I'll get a police officer and the DPW guy. You know. But um, I don't think it's there. Well, can we earmark upcoming growth? Again, by earmarking upcoming growth. That's what's needed to keep us even with inflation and contracts. So, so and, and roads is what it went into when we had extra before. So that's why we were able to do, Jim, how many millions of dollars worth of roads? Yeah, so that's where we've been putting our extra growth because we've neglected not- Neglected it for so long. We neglected it for so long. So, no, I, I really don't think it's as easy as saying it's only 50,000, certainly you can find it. It's, the only way to free up that money is to cut something else. And I'll say that pretty succinctly. I mean, yeah, um, it's, I don't think there's anything else that can be any way to get the money except through cuts. But we'll look this year, you know? All right, thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, okay, so. I'm I don't think we can ask. hear anybody. Yeah. No, I don't think that's going to work. It's all messed yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. So put it for broadcast only. Oh, it's it was broadcast posted as broadcast only. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, we were allowing the school committee chair to speak because right. she was. Okay, so is, any other comments from the public? Because we're going to uh, talk for a minute. We good? Get up, Lisa. Lisa Harden, town clerk. I just am going to make a like point of information. Most likely the question would be number six because the uh, state has already determined one through five and they send out that red book that tells everybody. So it'll be 
Right after, after it'll be at the end. Right after legalizing mushrooms? Something like that. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'd and rather have it that than maybe the MCAS, Bob, right? Where do you <laughs> want it? After the mushrooms or the MCAS? Um, and the other thing is that you are correct. The um, presidential election has the highest turnout every four years. And there are people, a very large percent of voters who only vote every four years, and they are not paying any attention to anything, to anything that we're talking about today. And so in order to reach over half of those people, it will be a lot of work. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is the information that I'm hearing, and uh, yes. So, we, go ahead, <clears throat> um, what do you got? All right, so, so as far as I'm concerned, what is before us right now is just one, one choice, and that's whether or not we put the 1,070,767 on the ballot and on the town meeting because it's been made clear that the other departments aren't interested. Well, not Mr. McKay. Not Mr. Well, McKay. not Mr. McKay, but, well, mm -hmm. sort of. No. Um, it, that even if there was an appetite, that what they were originally asking for actually isn't even sufficient um, across the board. Yeah. So, um, I do believe that at some point to add those positions, we are going to need to entertain another override for the municipal side. But at this point, the request that sits on the table in front of us is from the school committee. So, um, so that's, that's where I see us. Yeah, I see us, what do you got? well, it's a tough one it's because tough. I, I, I don't believe that well, I firmly believe we need the police because I've been hearing about it since 2016, in a good way. That's not a bad thing to say. But for 2016, there's been a plan to fund it. Four officers is what was presented to the four or five officers presented to the Finance Committee way back then. We did two. I was trying to get two more. That was the plan. So I really believe we need them, especially after the presentation we had in executive session where we saw a lot of the concerns that the police are facing. However, I don't think it stands much of a chance to pass if the police chief isn't 100% behind it. So that complicates things a little bit. The fire position came up for the first time this year, so I understand that one, that that's the first time we've seen it. DPW has been going back, Ever. well, forever, four positions. So that one um, I think we need also. I do too. But... Um, Oh, and I that think one, we need them all. Well, I, I think, Don't I, get yeah, me like wrong. I said, I, well, <laughs> the fire is the only one that hasn't been a perpetual thing going back, you know, eight years, uh, you know, so, and that's not to say it's not needed now. It just came up, you know, but came up at the time we were looking at the override. Uh, the DPW position, one position at $54,000 is about $15 on the override. It's not a high ticket item for each household. It's like $15. And I think that makes a big difference. I really do think one more position will help keep the roads and the sidewalks and everything else more clear. So I'm, even though I don't have a strong endorsement from Jim, I think that one at that low cost really does make a difference and does start us in the right direction. And it goes towards helping with the uh, enterprise fund situations too, because there'll be a staff that's devoted just to general labor. So, my thought is the school has made a cogent case and ask and desperately needs it and desperately wants to do it and will run an override. So I've got them on my list as a yes. And then I have 54,000 for the uh, DPW labor is the direction I'd go. So, uh, yeah, that, well, that's, that's what we're here to decide, right? We, I decided earlier that I wasn't gonna second guess the school. Um, after listening to fire and, uh, and uh, police, um, I don't want to second guess them either. Um, I, 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 I don't know if it would matter, honestly, if the override is in November or May timing-wise. 
because it's still going to be too soon for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, they don't want to see an override ever, so anything is too soon. I'm very concerned about the voter turnout in November. Um, I, I'm concerned. I wish that the school committee, I wish that the school committee would be more thoughtful. I don't know how thoughtful they've been with this decision. Um, because if it loses by 100 or 200 votes, I don't know, it's going to change the, it's going to change a lot of things. It's going to change the appetite for an override ever. It's going to change what to do with the middle high school renovation. It has a lot of repercussions. Um, but I don't think that they've changed their mind after this discussion. Is anybody still on here? Is Robin? Well, I know we can't even hear her, but well, there's I'm a, sure she's still. Well, yeah, she's on, I believe. But there's still, there's still a, yeah, we can't hear you. Yeah, yeah, so I guess. You know there's still fault. Yeah, Why? well, and there's, that's the difference. I mean, those three departments in the back are the departments we supervise, so we're speaking for them. Yep. Um, Robin is speaking for the school committee, yep. so, so that's the difference. I mean, a, a big piece of me says that, you know, that our job isn't to think of politically what's best, it's, it's to think of what the town needs. And I've been convinced that the town needs the police officers, the fire, and the DPW. I don't believe a salary study is going to tell us, or not study, but a, a study of how to fund it is going to tell us anything different than we need them and we have to fund them somehow barring grant and, and I do hold hope that the fire chief can get ambulance fees to cover it because that's been a way we've made money in the past to fund these positions but I don't know if there's grants available for police I'd like to think if there were we would have started seeing them um, because he's the our chief's quite competent and would get grants if they existed so um, you know it and it's it's certainly not a threat I don't want to come back again in May for this I think that is too soon if we go for the schools now coming back in May for another one I know, looks well, like I, we're separating it for political well I've heard that. I've heard I mean a lot uh, not a lot but a few people have said well what happens in November if it doesn't pass is the school going to come back in May 2025 are we just going to keep doing this I don't have an answer uh, does Bob you probably don't have an answer I don't think any of us do no. you don't know I, don't. I know I don't Again, I wouldn't know either I, I, I don't know how that works. Some towns go, right. Yeah. I mean, some towns, they just keep coming back and back and back. They think they're going to wear everybody down. I don't know how well, I don't that think works. That's the, I don't think it's fair to say we're trying to wear, because I said it at town meeting. This is a problem that exists. Right. We are short of staff. Our job isn't to come up with a political solution that keeps us getting yeah. reelected. Yeah. Our job is to fund the needs of the town as best as we see those needs. Okay. And I still see it as need. I'm not saying it's coming back in May, but I'm just saying that the problem exists. The problem needs to be okay. funded. And yeah. the school committee is uh, being thoughtful about the decision and that they need to do what's best for the students, and this is what is best. Yeah. Okay. All right. All discussion done? <clears throat> Craig? The only part is, including DPW, right. you're not on my side. That, otherwise, I'm with you on it. Well, I, I'm... Uh, that we're done with discussion, I mean, I'm with you. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, we want the DPW to be, well, so do we, am. could we get a motion? 67, yeah, hold on, I'm doing math. It's, math. 50, it's 54 for the DPW, right? I think it was the number yeah. we had, yeah. Exactly 54 even? Well, it was very, it was close to that. I won't say it was exactly. Let's just add 54. Okay. All right, yeah. so hopefully my math is correct. Um, <laughs> No, that's, I that's also okay. added up. In I my don't have my phone with me. Got. All right, go ahead. I got right. one million one hundred twenty-four thousand seven hundred sixty-seven. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I stopped it. All right. <clears throat> I move thousand. that we place on the town meeting warrant as well as um, <laughs> on the presidential ballot a proposition two and a half ballot question. That reads, shall the town of Millis be allowed to assess an additional $1,124,767 in real estate and property, personal property taxes 
for the purposes of providing for the general administrative cost of operating the schools and DPW for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2024. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Were you an yeah. aye? Yeah. So it's unanimous. It's gonna go on the ballot and uh, a vote. And I thank everybody for coming and uh, everybody for watching. Thank you. Madam Chair, I move we adjourn. Second. Can we move in second to adjourn? Adjourn. Aye. 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 Aye, aye, aye. All right. Thank you. Ugh.